Welcome back, Internet World. We are here in period one, and we're doing Super Pac-Man today. We just went over a ThinkPair share activity, and uh, we came up with a Sprint Task List. And the Sprint Task List comes out to be nor ordered a little bit like this. Number one, get the ghost to move, the dot to move, the fruit to move, and the Powerball to move. Okay, and probably have them bounce off the walls. Um, number two, we want to move Pac-Man diagonally so he can go and eat them. Number three, we want to do a reset game, which is probably going to be way down at the bottom. Um, we then want to collide with the fruit, the ghost, and the dot. We want to score the game. We want Pac-Man to lose lives. We want to display the score in lives. We want to get the timer and the game time to work so it goes 60, 59, 58, 57. Um, we want to get the pe play pause button to work. And we want to shoot fire and ice. Is that correct? And then when we're done with it, we want to reset the game. So reset game's probably going to be at the very end. Are you with me? All right. So does everybody understand how we do this? Because now you want to do it in a logical order. Why do we do things in a logical order? So that it's done more efficiently. All right. Here we go. So I'm going to get the ghost to move. So I'm going to go back to screen one initialize. Who remembers what screen one initialize does? What? When does screen one initialize happen? When someone presses your app icon on their phone and this game pops up. So when the game starts, this is like starting the game here. So actually, um, do you guys know that we're going to do a reset button? So watch this. I could do a procedure right now just to start thinking about reset. I could do start reset start reset game okay and what should happen here is this should start and reset the game so I come over here I go to my procedure call and when screen one initializes we want to start and reset this game so who now understands what I'm doing all right so guess what we can go down here and actually do we don't even have to wait to do reset button okay so let's go down here and go to BTN reset and what procedure am I going to call? <laughs> I'm going to call start and reset the game. Okay? So you actually you're doing, because these procedures work, okay, we're able to start doing two things at once here. And that's called working smarter, not harder, right? Now you're working more efficiently. Okay? Who, who's with me on this? Who's not? Are we good? Okay, so when we start and reset the game, I want my ghost. I want Inky to start to move. All right. So you're going to go ahead and, and um, we're going to set its heading. What else can we do with Inky in here? Do you guys know that you guys can go to this little drop-down spinner bar right here and you can go look for other things? So I want him to be heading. I want him to have a speed. And I want them to have an interval. An interval is how often they get to move. Okay. So heading. Have we done heading directions yet? We haven't done headings yet. Have we talked about headings? Do we know that you can face 360 degrees in a circle? No, we haven't done that yet. All right, so let me put that on the video then. Uh, so let me go get a some smart software. Uh, let me pause this video. All right, welcome back, Internet World, and here we go. So let's let's talk about the screen here for a second. So let's go get something that looks like a screen. This is going to be our playing board. Okay. So how many people know? that this is an upside down coordinate plane. Okay, so if you go up here and get a pen, and let's say I go get a green pen, and this guy right here is zero, zero. Okay, you guys with me on that? So let's put Pac-Man in here somewhere. This is our Pac-Man guy, and Pac-Man is really a square, okay, even though he has an alpha channel and looks round, and Pac-Man has an X and a, an X and a Y coordinate. Okay, so now Pac-Man 
And this is why you always need to make Pac-Man facing east first, because the default value is facing at zero degrees to the, what, what directions is this? This is east, right? Okay, this is northeast. Uh, this is southeast. Uh, this is southwest. This is west. Make that a W. And this is northwest. Okay, and this is north. Now, the computer does not have north and northeast. It does know these, knows these is edges. This is edge one. That's the one. Okay, this is edge two. East is edge three. Um, this is four. And this is negative one. This is negative two. This is negative three. And this is negative four. Okay, these are just things you have to know. All right. So let's say you were playing a game and you wanted a ball to bounce or you wanted to score a goal. Let's say this was a hockey game, right? Or a, so if the hockey puck ever hits three, right, you got a score for the opposite team. If the hockey puck hits negative three, you have a score for the home team or vice versa or however you want to think about that. Are you with me? If the puck hits one, you probably want it to bounce and go diagonal. Are you with me? If it hits two, bounce. If it hits four, bounce. All right. If you're playing up and down, let's say you're playing a tennis match up and down. Well, if you ever hit one, then you scored. If you hit negative one, you scored. Everything else would bounce. Are you with me? All right. So you could think of this like playing baseball, too. You know, home run if you go to one. Home run if you go to two. Home run if you go to negative three. I'm batting at negative one. Right? If the pitcher pitches the ball and it hits negative one, it's a strike. If I hit the ball and it hits negative three, it's a foul ball. If I hit the ball and hit three and it, it hits positive three, it's a foul ball. Are you with me? So you guys got to start thinking about this screen this way. So now this guy can start heading this direction at 90 degrees is facing up. Anyone want to guess what this way is? 90 and 90 is? 180 degrees, okay? You guys got to be able to do math in here. What's this one? 270 degrees. Okay, let's do the diagonals because you guys eventually want Pac-Man to move diagonally, right? So Pac-Man's going to, half of 90 is 45. Okay, add 45 onto 90 and you get 135. Okay, add 45 onto 180, you get 225. Okay, add 90 on to, uh, to, add 45 on to 270, and you get 315, okay? You may want to jot this down on your paper. Do you guys have paper in front of you? Can you jot this down quickly? And can you know this stuff? All right. What? Why wouldn't you write it down? Yes, you can, but why wouldn't you write it down? I'm just saying. Because you guys got to act like I'm not here. Are you with me? You guys should be, you know what you should be doing? Watch this. This is what you should be doing. You should be going into your designer, okay? Go into designer. Let's refresh this. All right. Go into designer. You guys should be going into your designer, and you're going into drawing and animation, and you should be going into Canvas without me, right? And you're going to go right here and say, oh, okay, here, let's read about a canvas. So here's a canvas. They have background color, paint color, background image, uh, da, da, events, drag, flung, touchdown, methods, okay, draw, da, 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 image sprite. Here we go, image sprites. So can an image sprite have a heading and direction? Here you go, heading. Returns the sprites heading in degrees above the positive x-axis. Zero degrees is heading to the right of the screen. Do you see it? Did you hear that? Zero degrees is heading to the right of the screen. Well, is that what I did here? Is zero degrees heading to the right? Which I called, I made it a little bit more simple. I said right is east, right? And then you come back here and you say, oh, 90 degrees is heading towards the top of the screen. And then does it tell you anything else? Do you have to figure out the other one of these? Yeah, then you got to figure out the rest of these. Oh, wow, it must go in 360 degrees. So do you have to figure out the rest? Yes. 
That's what IT is all about. you got to figure stuff out. But could you have done a little reading in here? Oh, here you go. Here's interval. The interval of milliseconds, which is Sprite's position, is updated. For example, if 50 interval is 50 and the speed is 10, the Sprite will move 10 pixels every 50 milliseconds. Is that what we want to do right now? Yes. So let's go do that. So you're going to go back in MIT, and now that we have this understanding, we can go up here, and we can say, okay, this sprite is going to head, there, and I think it didn't save, here's the speed, and here you go, and this speed is, uh, and has an interval. So let's go ahead and do exactly what they said. They recommended doing 50 milliseconds, so we're going to come in here and go, okay, every 50 milliseconds. All right, so let's have these guys go in different speeds. So we're going to go math and a random integer. And we're going to go get um, 5 to 15 pixels per second. Okay? And let's go get a random heading. Which way could these guys head? Well, we want them heading in random directions, right? So we want them heading in uh, 0 to 300 and 59 degrees. No, 360, right? Yeah, 360 is 359. That's correct. All right. So, boom, I'm done. But that's only blinking movie. So, can I get the rest of the ghost to move? How do I do that? I'm going to copy paste this whole block. I'm going to take out this guy here. I'm going to delete this guy here. And now this is going to be the next one down. It's going to be not blinky, but it's going to be Clyde. And I just go right down through my list. All right. I'm going to copy and paste this guy. And I'm going to grab two of these ghosts over here. And I'm going to delete this guy right here. Do you guys see how coding is a lot about copying and pasting? Okay. So I just did Clyde. I'm black to blinky. So the next after Clyde is the dot. Do I want the dot to move? Yes. So I come down here and make this the dot. After the dot is the fruit. And I come down here to fruit. And I make the fruit move. Okay. And how many more do I have? So I have Inky, Pinky, and Powerball. So three. So I'm going to copy and paste this guy one more time. I'm going to go get three of these. So one, two, three. I'm going to go all the way up to Clyde. I'm going to bring Clyde down. I'm going to delete this block because I already have it. Okay. And then I'm going to come up here. I've got the fruit. I've got, I'm back to Clyde again. So after the fruit is inky, so this is going to be inky, inky, and inky. Is this hard to do? This is going to be pinky, pinky, and pinky. And this is going to be Powerball, Powerball, and Powerball. Boom, I'm done. Okay. Okay, call reset game two. Why is this called reset game two? I want one. This guy over here should be called Start Reset Game. There we go. So this is your Start Reset Game. So here we go. Down here, this should be Start Reset Game. Don't know why that didn't say we had a server problem. They're probably getting snow over in Boston. You with me? <laughs> okay. So how many people understand what I just did here? How many blocks of code did I just get? A lot. Okay. Let's right-click on that. That's 75 blocks of code. Did it take me a long time to get 75 blocks of code? Did I have to write every single individual block of code? No. What do I do? Copy, paste, copy, paste, duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. That's called working efficiently. Are you with me? And then I just work in order because I just go straight down the list. Okay. I just start with the first guy, Blinky, and then I go to Clyde, then I go to Dot, then I go to Fruit, I go to Inky. I, I, we, are, we don't need Pac-Man. He's already done. Pinky and Powerball. Okay, just go right down the list, keep it simple, make them all work, make them all move. Let's... So did anyone get to run this? Page. It worked? They moved. All right, was it cool? Totally kosher? It was? Mine wasn't. Yeah. What?
There's an error. Maybe refresh your page. Refresh MIT. What? Seventy. Yeah, I have seventy-five blocks. Did anyone run this? Gage, you ran it, right? Did did they they did they did move? And how long did they move for? They're still moving. Did you make them bounce? Okay, so you're pretty smart, Gage. You made them bounce. Okay, um, if you run the game right now, I ran the game, and my ghosts move, but then they go duck in a corner, and they won't come out of a corner. Are you with me on that? Why? Why do they just go to a corner and duck in a corner and stop? <laughs> because, Gage, we didn't do what? Tell them to do what? Okay, and 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 what 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 do you mean? Keep going. You have to do something when you hit an edge. Are you guys with me? You have to if handle the event of when you hit an edge. What do you want them to do, Alyssa? Bounce. Alyssa's right. She says I want them to bounce off an edge. All right. So watch this. Okay. So now you got to come down in here, and I'll, I'm going to reduce this a little bit. Okay. Now what I have to do is go down to image sprite blinky and say edge reach. Well, when they reach an edge, what do you want to do? you got to do something, right? So you go back to Inky and you want to tell it to bounce. <laughs> okay, so you're going to tell it to bounce. You're going to go get this um, edge right here. You're going to say bounce off the edge. All right, boom. They just bounced off the edge. Now, Blinky's bouncing off the edge. Are any of the other ones bouncing off the edge? No, so what am I going to do? Copy and paste. So here we go. Let's go right down the list again. Duplicate. This is going to be um, Clyde. Make sure you m put Clyde inside also. You got two, you got to change. You got to change. When Clyde reaches an edge, you want Clyde to bounce. I've had students do when Clyde reaches an edge, Blinky bounces. <laughs> well, guess what? That's not going to work. Right? So make sure you duplicate this. And next, you want the dot to reach the edge. I want the dot to bounce. I'm going to duplicate this again. And I want the fruit to reach an edge. I want the fruit to bounce. I'm going to duplicate this again. Is this hard? Hello? Is this hard? No, this is not hard. Okay? Uh, I want Inky to reach an edge. I want Inky to bounce. Okay? I want. Uh, pinky to reach an edge. I want um, that's Inky and Inky. This is Pinky and Pinky, and this guy down here should be uh, this guy down here should be Powerball and Powerball. Okay, who understands this? Okay, now what should happen now? Now what happens? Okay, watch, watch what happens now. <laughs> now what's happening? Are they bouncing off edges? Well, yes, they are. Because why? I handled the edge. I told them to bounce. Okay. Don't know why Powerball is not bouncing. Oh, because here you go. Here you go. Look at this. Look inside of my Powerball. What's inside of my Powerball? Pinky. So is my Powerball going to bounce? <laughs> no. So I, this is a common mistake. Make sure you go Powerball and make sure you go Powerball needs to bounce. Now the Powerball bounces. Look, there goes the Powerball. Okay. I don't know where my dot is. Okay. So uh, let's go through the sprint task list. Can someone go to the board for me and start checking that off? Um, I want to move the ghost. The dot and the Powerball. So I got them moving correctly. So that's done. All right, Josh, can you run up to the board and check that off? Okay. Put a check on number one up there. Ghost to move, dot to move. Just check it off. Put a big check by it. Colored, please. Okay. What's next? Okay. 
Okay. Uh, we're not going to do reset yet because we haven't even played the game yet. So you need to make that like number 11. Make reset number 11. Just erase the 2 and make it 11. Erase the 2 and make it an 11. That guy needs to go down at the bottom of the list. Are you with me? So don't we need to collide with the ghost right now? Hello? Don't we need to do some collision? Okay. Because once we collide with them, we can score the game. Are you with me? Or lose lives. All right. So now what we got to do is we're going to come down here. Okay. And I'm going to go get Pac-Man because Pac-Man's going to do the colliding, right? Pac-Man's doing the eating. And we're going to say if wins Pac-Man collides with. And we're going to go focus on this little collides with right here. You guys see image sprite Pac-Man collide with. Thumbs up if you see that. All right. Now we need to control who he, who he collides with. So do a control if, and I want to say if Pac-Man collides with, and you need a logical equal to here, okay? If the other sprite is equal to what? Well, who, who, can, I, who can I collide with? All right, let's do the dot first. So you're going to go down here and say, okay, the little dot. If the other sprite is equal to the dot, what should happen? Who can tell me what should happen in the game if you collide with a dot? What? Um, it's, we're going to have a little bit simpler game than that. That would be maybe like the Powerball. If you eat the Powerball, yeah, you could start eating ghosts. All right. But don't we get points if we eat a dot? Okay, so you, you want to create a variable here. Okay, create a variable called score. Okay. And you're going to set that score equal to zero. And then you're going to come back into your variable, and you're going to go ahead and set your score. Score is equal to do math with it. And you're going to go get the score again and say, okay, my score is equal to score plus what? How much do you get for eating a dot? 10 points, 100 points, 1 point. What do you want? Gage, how much you want, bud? 10. Okay, so let's give him 10 points. So if you get 100 points in the game, right? Right? Okay. Could I have Pac-Man play a sound when he eats points? Like, yum. Right? Wouldn't that be cool? So let's go back to Designer. And let's go to your media. And let's play a sound. And I'm going to rename this sound called Sound Yum. Sound Yum. Okay. And... He's going to go and do sound yum. And now I can go into uh, my programs here. I'll show you guys this real quick. And you guys can put yourself in the video game. It's a, it's a software called Audacity. And I don't have it on this. Oh, shoot. This is a new computer. I don't have Audacity yet. All right. So let me show you guys this real quick. You guys can go online. And you go to A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. All right. And this is your Audacity software. Go to SourceForge.net. You guys can download this at home. Okay. Go hit download. And you want to download Audacity. You guys already do. This is a brand new computer for me. I haven't used this computer all year long. I've used my laptop. So um, this guy. So you want to go out here and, and download this. All right, and go ahead and download Audacity and get it set up on your computers at home.
All right, I'm going to pause the tape here, get it set up. I'll be back in a minute. So here we go. So we are in Audacity here. This is what Audacity looks like. And you just go up here and start recording. And I'm going to go yum, yum. Okay, stop it. And then hit play. You guys probably can't hear it like I do because it's playing back in my headphones, but I can hear it, okay? So what you can do now is you go find this where it says yum. So I can go like highlight this. And I got like a breath in here. I don't want my breath. So I'm just going to go right here and go yum. Okay, so there it is. That's the portion that I like. And I'm going to go File, um, Export Selected Audio. And I'm going to go back into my PC. I'm going to go into my documents. I'm going to go into um, my, uh, what is this, 2017-18. Uh, we are in Innovators. Okay, this is period one, quarter three, pack attack. I'm going to go save this WAV file as yum. Okay. And you guys could go through here and do the artist. And this is, watch this. This is pretty cool. Look at the genres here. Well, everybody look at the genres. Look at all the genres. Isn't that cool? Trip, trip hop, tribal, trailer, techno, industrial, industrial, slow jams. Um, Lo-fi, I don't even know what some of this stuff is. I want to look it up. Are you with me? Look at all this stuff. You guys can classify it. All right, and then did hit. This, this is like you be having your own recording studio at home. Are you with me? And hear how it sounds. All right, so you go, you export it. Boom. Okay, so now I go back to MIT. I go to my sound file. Okay, let's come down here to my sound yum file. And just like an image up here, you guys are going to go to your source. You're going to go upload, choose a file. And I'm going to go into my documents, 2017, 18, Innovators and Makers, Period 1, Pack Attack. I know where stuff is. Do you guys see why I do folders? There's my WAV files. You guys see my WAV file right there, yum? And I'm going to open this, and I'm going to put that into my game. It's uploading it to the assets folder. All right. Boom, I'm done. It worked. It took it. You want to go to blocks. And what's going to happen when Pac-Man collides with a dot? I'm going to go to my sound, yum, and I want to play that sound. Was that hard to do? <laughs> play the sound. Okay. Not only do I want to play the sound, but I want to display it on the scoreboard. So now I need to go to LBL score. And I want to go ahead and set its text. And I'm going to go get a text join. And I'm going to go get a text text box. And in here, I'm going to say score. S-C-O-R-E colon space. And down here, I'm going to do game global score. All right. And boom, I just scored it. And now let's play the game. All right, if I go back here, um, if Pac-Man collides with the dot, I can't even see the dot, though, okay? It should say yum. All right, so we need to test that to see if it says yum. Okay. Here's my dot. Image sprite dot. I don't know why I don't see image sprout diet on the page on my screen. There's a problem with this guy up here. This guy's get so one of these guys is getting stuck in the corner. Don't know. It's this guy here. This guy's getting Clyde is getting stuck in the corner. So let's go see why Clyde is getting stuck in the corner. I bet I messed up with Clyde. Image sprite Clyde edge bounce. Image sprite Clyde bounce. That looks good. Don't see a problem with that. Don't know why Clyde's getting stuck in the corner. Blinky, blinky, Clyde, Clyde. Oh, here it is. Image sprite dot. There it is. I want my dot to bounce. That's why my dot's not moving. There's my dot. So you guys see how now I can go after the dot. And if I go after the dot, come on. 
Did you guys hear it say yum? Okay, so that worked. When I collide with a dot, I get a yum. Okay, I hit it again. Now I'm at 20 points. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. All right, 807, we're out of here. Nice job today. Are we out of here? Yeah. All right, so keep calm and code on. Great job today. Who learned something? How many blocks of code did we get today? I got 171. I know we got 75 over here. Probably, you know, we probably got over 100 blocks of code today. All right, 30 minutes, 100 blocks of code. See you tomorrow. Bye.